Today, I'm going to talk about building efficient and frugal image data processing pipelines, uh, which is based on my experience in Amazon. And this is the agenda. We will first overview the image processing use cases in the large, in, in the large industry, the most challenges that we face, the current state-of-art solution, and the future invasion we have it for. And here, there are so many examples of the application of image data, medical imaging, object recognition for vehicles, product image and recommendation for social media and e-commerce. And recently, due to AI, its importance continues to grow for multimodal AI training specifically. Most of the challenges come from large image data sets, the high storage cost, for storing vast amounts of image data and very intense computation when processing the image image quality and the time it consumes is very long as well. Sometimes it can become a bottleneck of the infrastructure for any real time and time sensitive applications. And network bandwidth bandwidth transforming those data over network is very expensive and costly as well. And the, most of the time, we are very limited on those resources. And the goal of this efficient and frugal pipeline is very important, that, such as we are able to minimize the processing time and uh, optimize the storage costs and uh, utilization to have better resource allocation throughput. The first important thing is choosing the right image formats. There are several popular image formats to consider, but each with its own advantages and trade-off, uh, mostly in terms of compression and image quality. There's, there here are some commonly used image formats, like such as PEG is the popular choice for photographers and the image with complex color gradients. It offers a good balance between file size and image quality, whereas PNG it's more versatile and lossless, suitable for images with sharp edges and transparency. And I, feel like I would like to go more uh, details about this popular choice JPEG that which we'll be using a lot in our image processing infrastructure. Um, it's known for joint photographic, photographic experts group, which actually I'm new to this as well. It's widely used lossy compression format for photographers and as i said it has a good balance between the size and the quality and also supports adjustable compression level allowing for fine grain control over the trade-off between file size and image quality it's widely used in web browsers and the editing software and the png also new to me portable network graphics that is, unlike JPEG, PNG preserves all image data, ensuring that no quality is lost, even after multiple edits. Um, it supports a wider range of colors and transparency like, um, than JPEG, making it very ideal for logos, icons, and graphics. And there's some breakdown of the next generation image formats. Yeah, I think, for example, WebPEG, uh, WebP, that's offer both lossy and the lossless compression. H like HIC, that was high efficiency video coding for compression. And AVIF, that's based on the AV1 video codec. It's very promising, even better than compression than WebP and HIC. And in the realm of image compression, there's a fundamental trade off between file size and the image quality, mostly. Like for the low C compression, you can achieve higher compression ratios that is achieved by selectively discarding some image data. It's mostly suitable for applications where minor quality loss is acceptable for lossless compression that will, com that will pr preserve all image data, but resolve in larger size. It's mostly ideal for applications where uh, image fidelity is very critical such as medical and uh, archives sometimes. There are 
Yeah, there's a bunch of recommended compression libraries and tools provide pre-built functionality for encoding and decoding various image formats um, that enable efficient compression and de de decompression of image with our application. Um, mostly including the algorithm and hardware acceleration capabilities, capabilities uh, which can have an improvement of the performance. And uh, this also isolated the logic of image handling process, uh, which can let us to focus on our business use case when dealing with image processing. And here is um, a way to choose the right image formats using adaptive compression. Adaptive um, the adaptive compression that can optimize image storage and bandwidth by dynamically adjusting compression levels based on the contact and the quality requirements. Um, yeah, this is the benefits can provide us good, uh, better user experience and cost saving. And this is how it works. It will first do the analysis of the content to identify areas with varying levels of detail and complexity. Um, based on that, it will have different compression level, um, such as um, smooth background can be compressed more, while faces and edges need to compress less to preserve the visual quality. And then, then the last is final encoded image to a smaller size while maintaining acceptable the quality. And the, when it came to infrastructure, it's very popular to leveraging cloud native services for cloud storage and uh, other and other system system handling that I will go over later. Yeah, cloud computing offers significant offers lots of service that will enhance the efficiency and the cost effective of the image processing pipelines. And uh, these are the popular choices. It will offer the benefits of scalability, durability, cost effectiveness, and accessibility. That the image data can be accessed from anywhere with an internet connection, facilitating the collaboration and the remote processing. And we are also using a lot of serverless computing for on-demand image processing. The popular choice is AWS Lambda. Yeah, we'll be using AWS Lambda mostly. And this is more like we can run code in response to events without provisioning and managing servers. And also this on-demand execution model is good for image processing such as resizing, resizing, thumbnail generation, and the format conversion. There are also cloud-based image processing APIs that is very handy, such as, uh, yeah, we'll be using recognition a lot, but probably Google and Azure also offer a similar uh, service like that. And it helps us with the object detection, image classification, facial recognition, and contact or moderation. Yeah, which save us a lot of effort building and maintaining our own models. And here are some strategy for optimizing cloud costs using spot instance that take advantage of unused cloud computing capacity. Having the right size resources, choosing the appropriate instance type that can match the workload to and to avoid over provisioning. Leverage reserved instance, which is commit to using specific instance tabs for longer duration and we can get discount pricing of that and yeah monitor and analyze user pattern so we can identify where we can optimize con um, iteratively budget alert yeah definitely having the alert to notify when the cloud spending is exceed the limits which can happen quite often Data per and distribute processing and the parallelism, uh, which is also very helpful. That is how we divided the image data into smaller chunks and process it in parallel to achieve better throughput and uh, efficiency. And uh, this approach allows us to leverage the combined processing power of multiple machines and definitely speed up our pipeline in the end. 
I can give an example of the parallel task for image processing, such as such as we can break the task into independent subtasks, resizing, filtering, feature expression, and uh, you are able to do these independent steps simultaneously or in a concurrent man manner. And optional, if necessary, we can synchronize the result of the subtask and obtain the final output. When it comes to distributed processing and parallelism, there are also several known frameworks that we can leverage. Apache Spark, the versatile distributed computing framework well suited for the big data processing. It offers high-level APIs for working with large data sets. And Dusk uh, is a flexible library for parallel, program, uh, parallel computing in Python. And Ray is a general purpose cluster computing framework that is good at it offers a simple API for parallelizing Python code and supports various machine learning library. These frameworks provide the tools and abstractions to distribute your image processing workload across multiple machines and enable you to process large data sets efficiently. And next one is uh, containerization and the orchestration. Yeah, these two technologies can simplify the deployment and the management of uh, image processing pipelines, such as the containerization like Docker allows you to package your application and dependency into portable containers. And these containers can run consistently across different environments, ensuring reproductive, reproduct, uh, recur, reproducible and uh, eliminating compatibility issues. And orchestration such as Kubernetes, automating the deployment, scaling, and the management of containerized applications. This will simplify the process of deploying your image processing pipeline across multiple machines and ensure that they run reliably, they run very reliable even in the face of failures. And continuous optimization and the cost, motor, cost monitoring as is the crucial part to help us remain efficient and budget friendly. Performing tools help you to identify performance bottlenecks by measuring the execution time of different stage. Once we identify any bottom -like bottlenecks, we can apply various techniques such as algorithm improvements using more efficient algorithm or data structure, hardware acceleration, acceleration leverage GPU or specialized hardware accelerator uh, to offload computationally intensive tasks. Um, parameter tuning, um, which is like experiment with different parameter settings to find the optimal configuration for the workload. Yeah, and the caching and the memorization are also very valuable to optimizing the image processing pipelines. For caching, uh, we will store the result of expensive operation and this is very beneficial for image transformations and feature, feature extractions, which is applied repeatedly to the same images. Memorization will cache function calls result based on input arguments, preventing redundant computations when a function is called multiple times with the same inputs. And yeah, this is how mostly we to we are doing for the computationally intensive and the frequent repeated options for optimate for optimal. The cloud providers also offer a lot of tools to service to track resources usage and the associated costs, which can which will give us valuable insights in the financial footprint. And yeah, there's a lot of them. And we mostly using CloudWatch from AWS. Yeah, and uh, it helps us to gain the better visibility into our cloud expense and uh, make informed decisions most of the time in the important business leadership meetings. The future of image processing is very bright with lots of with lots of advanced advanced progress in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Lots of techniques like deep learning and neural networks can enabling sophisticated image analysis tasks. 
However, the image processing technologies is uh, can causing some ethical implications, such as privacy bias and transparency. They need to be carefully addressed to ensure the responsible and the ethical use of image data. Yeah, that's a hard and a controversial topic where to uh, strike the balance between the innovation and the ethical considerations. For now, we will be evaluating the risk based case by case, mostly about who are our how who are the customers of our images, and the based on how much benefits we can bring to them and the risk that we're gonna take to make the to make the balance and the informal choice. Here is the overview of the, my of my presentation. First we go through the image data use cases and its applications. And second we go through what is the main challenge with the large image data sets. And then we go through the state of art solution which in the industry regarding to having the right formats, compression techniques, uh, using cloud native services, um, distribute processing and parallelism, container and orchestration, and how to optimize and monitor the cost. And then we throw more provocative thoughts about the future plan, about the image processing, choices that we need to make in order to achieve both innovation and uh, safety measure. So here, so here, yeah, thank you so much for participating in this, this presentation. And here is my contact detail. So feel free to contact me for any questions and the future follow up if you want to collaborate more on the image processing pipeline. And I hope you have a good time at the conference.